Audi, a Martelli here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Lilio by Moto Hagio. Now, before I start reviewing this manga, I think it's important to note why I was interested in this book, uh, and that is because of the author, Moto Hagio. If you're unfamiliar with Moto Hagio, she is one of the Year 24 group, which is a group of women who revolutionized what shoujo manga could be. They introduced more layered, complicated stories, as well as some incredible techniques when it came to the artwork and paneling. And Moto Hagio herself has been an incredibly influential member. Uh, she's written series such as The Heart of Thomas, The Poe Clan, Other World Barbara, all very influential series. And so when I saw that Lilio had been released and that it had been written by Moto Hagio, I knew that I wanted to pick it up, read it, and give it a shot. And of course, the question then, as always, becomes, is Lilio any good? And that's what I'm going to be discussing today. So let's get started. So what is the story of Lilio? Lilio follows a character called Leo, uh, who is a cat, and he lives with his owner, Hibiki, who he quite often refers to as his mother. And the story is told episodically, uh, as we see all of the situations that Leo ends up in. To give you an example, the first chapter uh, covers Leo as he attends school. One of the neighbor kids is talking about the lunches that he gets at school. Leo is interested in it, and so he ends up wanting to attend. Uh, but being a cat, uh, there are a lot of problems that he ends up running into uh, when he tries to attend school. When it comes to the stories themselves, they're in general pretty entertaining. Uh, there's a lot of good humor there, and Leo himself is quite a likable main character. He's quite often motivated by his own desires, uh, which quite often end up getting him into these situations. But once he's actually within these situations, he ends up wanting to, you know, be nice to people. Uh, he wants to do the best that he can, etc., etc. And that makes him quite an endearing main character. With regards to the other characters, uh, they're pretty much okay. The owner, who I believe is called Hibiki, she's only referred to that twice uh, throughout the manga, uh, but I do believe that's her name, uh, is quite a likable character herself. Uh, who acknowledges that Leo is a bit on the strange side, but when he really desires something, she typically does try to do her best to help him in that regard. There's also a few other characters that show up every now and then. The neighbor cat who shows up uh, to kind of discuss stuff with Leo and point things out. The neighbor kid who plays with Leo sometimes and was the one who made him interested in wanting to go to school in the first place, etc, etc. And you know, they're all right characters. I wouldn't describe them as being particularly memorable, but they serve the roles relatively well. And of course, being a comedy manga, the other thing that's important to note is whether or not it's funny. And I would say that it's pretty funny. I did notice that every so often I was given a little chuckle uh, to something that Leo would do or something Leo would show, etc, etc. So I wouldn't call this super funny, but I did find myself laughing every now and then, which I think is a good sign. With regards to the artwork, uh, now the artwork here is where I think Lil Leo stumbles a little bit, at least when it came to my expectations. So as I mentioned before, Moto Hagyo is one of the Year 24 group who absolutely revolutionized soju manga, and a big part of that uh, was through their artwork, through many of the techniques they introduced, through their paneling, Oh, I absolutely love their paneling. And I was expecting quite a bit of that in this manga. And while the manga itself is still quite pleasant looking, it's not nearly as detailed as many of the other Year 24 group works. And when it comes to the paneling itself, it is for the most part relatively simple. There are moments where some of these techniques did bleed through, for instance, occasionally some panel borders will be absent, which is always something that I quite appreciate. But compared to so many other Year 24 group works, this is a very simple looking manga. Now, is the artwork bad? No, it isn't. It's still a very pleasant looking manga, and when it needs detail, it does have that detail. But I was just kind of hoping for some of that incredible artwork that many of the Year 24 group women did, as well as that fantastic paneling as well. Now with regards to the presentation, so this manga was released by Denpa, and if we compare it to my trusty Yatsuba, you'll see that it is a little bit bigger than your standard Tankaban, which is something that I always appreciate. Besides that, we don't have too many extras. There is an additional chapter in this book uh, which has real photos of cats uh, with speech bubbles, and it is quite bizarre, but in its own way it's quite endearing, and I'm glad that Denpa kept it in this edition when they ended up releasing this book. Besides that, the paper quality is pretty nice. 
Uh, so I definitely appreciate that. Uh, but the thing that I have to bring up, and this is quite bizarre to me, is how it is technically a hardcover, but not really. So if you take a look, this is kind of rigid, but also kind of not. It's certainly more rigid than your paperbacks, but it is certainly not rigid enough to be considered a true hardcover. It is very flimsy. And I've criticized some releases in the past for their flimsy hardcovers. I particularly remember criticizing Vinland Saga's release for having this kind of cheap feel to it. But compared to that, like this is so much cheaper feeling. Now, granted, this manga wasn't particularly expensive to pick up, so I don't think that this presentation added much cost to actually buying it. I'm still kind of debating with myself whether this is still better than a paperback release. And ultimately, it probably is. Probably is still better than a paperback release, uh, but it's something quite bizarre to me. And so I would, of course, love to hear your thoughts on the presentation of this manga. Whether you consider it to be a hardcover or do you consider it to be something in between? Because it's certainly not a paperback, I can tell you that much. So overall, what are my thoughts on Little Leo? I did ultimately end up enjoying this manga. There was a lot of charm to it. Leo himself is a very likable main character. Uh, there's some good humor in it. But I do confess that I was hoping for a bit more when it came to the artwork and paneling because of Moto Hagio's prior works. And while the artwork itself is still pretty good, um, I was a bit disappointed in that. Regardless, if you're into manga about cats, if you're looking for some kind of comedy manga, then there are certainly much worse options than Little Leo. It's still an enjoyable read, ultimately, even if it didn't reach the standard that I was hoping it would. So that was my review of Little Leo. Please let me know what you thought of Little Leo. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Are you interested in picking this up if you haven't already? What are your thoughts on it compared to many of Moto Hagio's other works? And of course, if you have any other information about Little Leo, about Moto Hagio, about the Year 24 group, please leave it in the comments below. And of course, if you want to support the channel, I would encourage you to use my Amazon and Write Stuff affiliate links in the description below. When you purchase an anime or manga through those affiliate links, not only are you supporting me, not only are you supporting the channel, but you're also supporting the anime and manga industry. So I would highly encourage you to use those affiliate links to purchase your anime and manga. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.